Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You know, it's a good thing to be here, to be alive, to be well, and to be sharing with us in another Bible study. You know, tonight we want to conclude our series on the topic, Finding and Abiding in the Will of God. Let me just take the time out to welcome everyone that is streaming in tonight, whether you're in Jamaica, you're overseas, we greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, and we pray God's richest blessing on your life. Before we get into the word, let us breathe a word of prayer tonight. I invite each and every one of us to just breathe a word of prayer before we get in the word. Lord, we come to you tonight and we want to bless your name and we give you thanks mighty God for all that you have done for us for all that you will be doing Lord we thank you for your manifold blessings and we ask mighty God that you continue to cover us as individuals and as a people we pray God that you will order our steps in your words and that you will help us almighty God just to live the way you want us to live we ask you, Heavenly Father, just to take full charge and just to take full control and let your perfect and let your great will be done. We ask you to bless this Bible study tonight. We ask you to touch every heart. We ask you, God, to just reveal your will to us, reveal your plan to us, and give us the strength to walk within this plan. We thank you for your love and your mercies again and bless as we get in the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, amen. So like I said, we have been talking about finding and abiding in the will of the Lord. And it is important that as individuals, we make sure that we walk in the plan of the Lord, the plan that he has for us, the plan that he had in his mind from before the foundation of the earth, this plan that God has for us. We want to make sure that as individuals, we walk within this plan. Amen. And we've been looking at the scripture from Genesis chapter 15 and Genesis chapter 16. Um, don't, don't ne not necessarily going to read through all of them tonight, but we're just going to look at Genesis chapter 15. And then, you know, we will get in the word. The Bible says, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine ear. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be in thine ear, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine ear. And he brought him forth abroad, and said, Look now towards the heaven, and tell the stars if thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. So we are all familiar with Genesis chapter 16. We have been reading it um, for some weeks now. Uh, but we just wanted to, again, read Genesis chapter 15. So we were saying the last time that we met, we were talking about being able to identify the will of God and being able to walk within this will, within this plan that the Lord has for our life. And we did say that if we identify the plan of the Lord and we knowingly disregard this plan that God has for our life, that it is sin. I want to make the point tonight that as individuals, if we know the plan that God has for us, or a section or a part of the plan that God has for us, and we 
disregard this plan. Go and do our own thing. To us, it is sin. And we look at the scripture last week from James 4, verses 17. The Bible says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So if we know that what we are doing is not aligned in the will of God, to us it is sin. And there is no two ways about it. If you know the will of the Lord, it is important that you do the will of the Lord because this is what God wants us to do. I would like us to know that when God, this plan that God has for our life, God will not reveal his plan to us in its entirety. But what he will do from time to time, just as he did with Abraham, he will reveal to us a part of this plan. And then as time goes by, he will reiterate this plan. He will re-emphasize this plan to us. And this is what he did with Abraham. Even when sometime doubt came, and time passed and Abraham was wondering what is happening. God came and reassured him and said, look here, this is my plan for your life. And this is what I am going to do. And if the Lord said that he's going to do it, he is going to do it. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. And so God has a plan for each and every one of us. And at time, God will reveal this plan to us. But if we take it upon ourselves and we deviate from the plan of the Lord, I want you to know that it is a sin. God has a plan for your life. He expects you to walk within this plan. And anytime you take it upon yourself and decide that, look here, I cannot wait on the Lord. I cannot bother with this thing. And you do your own thing. To you, it is sin. The Bible also in Luke 12, 47 says, And the servant which knew his Lord's will. I want you to listen to this one carefully, you know. Luke 12, verses 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Like I have been saying to us, there will be repercussions. There will be beating with many stripes if we take it upon ourselves and come outside of God's will. A lot of things that we go through as Christians, a lot of things that we bear as Christians, we bear because we took up the thing on our own self and we come outside of God's will, God's perfect plan for our life and we do our own thing. If you do your own thing, I want you to understand that there will be repercussions. You are going to have to live with it. You are going to have to go through with it. I want you to know that God will not mess with free will. So when you make your own decision, you are going to have to live with the consequences. Israel, upon their arrival, and we said it last week, at Kedish Barnea, which was the border of the promised land of Canaan, they sent out 12 spies to survey the land and its people. And you can find this in Numbers 13, 18 to 25. The perfect will of the Lord for them as a nation was for them to enter the promised land at that time. But immediately after the spies went out and came back, the spies, they took 40 days to explore the land. Ten of the spies, of the spies had bad reports. We can't attack these folks. They are stronger than we are. All the people we see are great in size. They are like giants. We seem like grasshopper. To them, only Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome. And that is Numbers 14, 6 to 7. Believing the report of the ten daughters, 
the people lost heart and rebel. They raised their voices and wept aloud, grumbling against Moses and Aaron, saying, If only we had died in Egypt or in this desert, why is the Lord bringing us into the land? Only let us fall by the sword. And that is Numbers 14, 1 to 2. The Bible then let us know that Israel wandered in the desert 40 years because of their sin. Their sin angered God who disciplined them for it. They weren't following his perfect will for them as a nation. They weren't walking in faith. And because of this, their statements angered the Lord. And for 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. And only two from that group entered into the promised land. Caleb and Joshua. Like I've been saying brothers and sisters. We are going to face repercussions. We are going to have to deal with the consequences that come, oh bless the name of Jesus, if we take it upon ourselves and go outside of God's perfect plan for our life. In Job 4, 10, verses 14, Job said, If I sin, you would be watching me and would not let my offense go unpunished. That is coming from the NIV. He said, if I sin, this is Job saying, you would be watching me and would not let my offense go unpunished. I want us to understand, like I've been saying, if you know how to do good and do it, it not to you, it is sin. If you go outside of God's perfect plan for your life, it is a sin against the Lord. And I want you to understand that we have to face the consequence. We have to bear the consequence and live with our decision. Like I said, some of the things that we are going through as children of the living God is as a direct result of us going outside of God's will for our life. Brothers and sisters, we will have to live with it. We will have to live with it. And this is just how things are. We also looked last week at the perfect versus the permissive will. You know, I tried to, to, to as best as possible, to have us to understand really, you know, the perfect and the permissive will. We know that God has a plan for our life and, and this plan is the perfect plan of God, his perfect will. This perfect will for us, like I said, is the plan. It is the design that God has for our lives. And this plan that he has for our life is from the foundation of the earth. He said to the prophet, before you came out of the womb, I know you, I know you from you were in your mother's womb. I want you to know, brethren, that God knows you even from before conception. And I would like you to know that God has a plan for your life. His plan that he has for your life is from before time began. Known to God, the Bible says, are all his works from before the foundation of the earth. This plan that God has for you is a roadmap for your life. And God wants us as best as possible to follow this plan. I have come to find out that if you are willing and desirous for the will of God to be done in your life, and that is your number one priority, I have come to find out that God will open doors for you and God will close doors for you and God will just do some things for you to, for you to remain in his will. But anytime we take it upon ourselves and we get caught up with the things that we desire and we get so caught up with the things that we desire until we don't recognize 
God's will, don't recognize God's plan, not giving God any space to operate, you're going to find that we will make decisions that is not aligned to the plan of the Lord. So irrespective of the path that we want our lives to go, God has a plan for our life. And it's important that as children of God, this is the plan that we embrace. This is the plan that we walk in. The plan, for, the plan of God for our lives. As it pertains to the permissive will. Remember last week I said as it pertains to the permissive will, it is what God allows. Permissive is like giving permission. or You, 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 you kind of allow the person to, to do what they are doing. So with the permissive will, God, like I said, God will not mess with, he will not interfere with free will. And what God did is that he made man free will moral agents. And God is not going to mess with our free will. So what the Lord does is allow us to make our own decisions. Even if we are going in the wrong direction, the Holy Ghost will prompt us. God will speak to us through his word. But if our minds are made up to go outside, God will not stop us. He will not, he will not put a stumbling block to say, look here, don't do that. But what God will do is allow us because our minds are made up and God will not interfere with free will. The, the permissive will of God does not mean that you are going to get a lesser blessing. No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that God has two wills for your life. God has one will. He has one plan for your life. Or it doesn't mean that your decision caught God by surprise. It simply means that God allow you to choose. So when we talk about the permissive will, and for me, this is as far as it goes. It doesn't mean that you are going to get a lesser blessing. No. It doesn't mean that your decision caught God by surprise. No. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that God has two plans for your life. It means that he has one plan. And this plan is for you to walk a particular way. But if you make your decision, God will allow you to make that decision. And for me, this is where the permissive will of the Lord stops. Because he allows you as an individual to make your own decision. We pointed out that God promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. And that his seed would be innumerable. God's design was for the seed of the promise to come through Abraham and his wife Sarah. But Abraham went in unto Agar and God allowed it. It was not that Abraham's decision caught God off guard. Because from the very beginning, the Lord said unto Abraham, I will make your seed innumerable. And the birth of Ishmael. sort of bring to pass the word of God. Yes, it is not that God identify the seed of Ishmael because at the end of the day, he said to Abraham, this will not be thine here. This will not be the person that I establish my covenant with. But the person that I will establish my covenant with is that seed that will come from your lines and the seed that will come out of the womb of Sarah. I don't know how God does it. I don't know how he, he do it. Um, it's it, it as if God would see everything, your life. And when you make that decision, God is able to, to allow that to be a part of his plan. I don't know how he, he does it. The difference though... The difference though is that if you walk in the perfect will of God, the perfect plan of God, you are going to recognize that if something goes wrong, you can say, yes, I know that I'm in the will of God and this is just God bringing me through a process to get me to mature to a level so that I can handle this thing. But if we go outside 
of God's perfect plan, there will be a repercussion. And that is the major difference. And I am saying to us that as people of God, if we go outside of God's plan, God there is going to judge us for it. He's going to punish us for it. There is no sin that goes unpunished. And God is going to, if we step outside of his will, we sin. So I don't know how God does it, but God, the son that came outside of God's perfect plan for Abraham's life, God caused the son to just be a part of his plan. But Jeremiah 29 verses 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, say the Lord, thoughts of peace. To prosper you, to give you an expected end. And then we also look at the scripture from Romans chapter 8 verses 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Like I said, this is not a license because we know that God is able to incorporate this thing within his will. Hallelujah. I want us to know that this is not a license for us to just make our own decision and do what we want to do because we now have a better understanding of the things that God will do. No, because if we do that, I'm emphasizing that we are going to have to deal with the consequences. Abraham and his wife, was, they were living, living nice and all right. The, the, the thing that troubled them though was that they needed a, a, a child. They wanted a child. And as soon as Sarah gave Hagar to, 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 to Abraham and said, look here, this is your wife. What the Bible says, that she was despised by Hagar. There was arguments in the house and I said it last week. There were arguments in the house and this is as a result of them coming now outside of God's perfect plan. Right. So other than arguing, they, they were swearing in the house. Sarah came to Abraham and she said, the Lord judge between me and thee. So swearing now taking place. Abraham was blamed for what was happening. She, she came to him and she said, Abraham, my wrong be upon you. In other words, you should have been wise enough to say, don't do this. You should have been wise enough to say, look here, let us talk to God to find out exactly what God means when he said, he's going to give us a son. So she blamed him. And the Bible did not record anything like this before between Abraham and Sarah. But then we read Genesis chapter 21, 8 to 13. Let us find that one. Genesis chapter 21, 8 to 13. The Bible says, So this was also another part of what Abraham had to deal with now, you know. The child, and the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Agar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous to Abraham's sight because of his son Ishmael. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad. And because of thy bondwoman, in all that Sarah had said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God is saying here, look here, send him away. 
I don't even ident I, I, I don't even see him. I'm not identifying with him because my covenant will be with Isaac. Also, this was not an afterthought of God, you know. But this was no God revealing it to Abraham. As, we, as you look at it now, just look at the perfect will, Isaac being the perfect will. And look at Ishmael being outside of God's perfect will. And him say, also of the son of the bond woman, I will make a nation because he is thy seed. I want you to understand that this no is not an afterthought. Because God had this in his plan for Abraham before time began. But now that Abraham went out and Ishmael was there, God was now revealing it to Abraham. So I am saying to us that even though we might go outside of God, God put something in place. To, to deal with that and this is as I don't know how he does it but all I know is that if we go there there will be repercussions and because of this the Bible says early the next morning and Abraham rose up early in the morning and he took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Agar put it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba or wandered in the desert of Beersheba. I want you to understand, brethren, that this child Ishmael, if it was not for the word of God which says, I am going to make a nation of this child, that this child would have died. Because when they went out there in the wilderness, Agar, the, the water ran out, the bread ran out. Agar turned her face aside and she said, she, I can't watch Ishmael died. And an angel come and says, see what over there. Hallelujah. And their lives were spared. Like I said, there will be consequences if we go outside of God's will. Amen. So like I said, last week, the sun of Agar was the son after the will of man. He, he was a son after the flesh. Very important. The son of Sarah was the seed of the promise. He was the child after the spirit. So you see what is happening. There is a child here. That is after the flesh, after the will of man. And then there is a child, Isaac, which is after the spirit, after the will of God. I want you to understand that even in today's day, as Christians, we must be aware. We must understand that in order to fulfill the will of the Lord in our life, as Christians, we cannot walk in the flesh. The Bible says, walk in the spirit, mighty God, that you might not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You see, we, you see how it's working now? One is after the flesh. One is after the spirit. And the apostle in the New Testament tells us, walk in the spirit that you might not fulfill the loss of the flesh. I want us to know that as children of the most high God, if we are going to to, to, to abide in the will of God. Identify it and abide in the will of God. We have got to make sure that we try as best as possible to walk in the spirit. They that are 
in the flesh cannot please the Lord. The Bible says, as many that are led by the Spirit are the sons. And so when we look in the Middle East, even as the children of these two brethren go at it year after year after year, and it seems like there can be no solution, I want you to understand that something is happening that we need to identify. And this is that one child was of the flesh and one child was of the spirit. And even before our very eyes, the flesh and the spirit is, is, is at a tug of war. And it's the same thing with us as Christians. If we are not careful, we will fulfill the desires of the flesh and the desires of the flesh, the will of the flesh, and that will take us outside of the will of God. Like I said, as children of the Most High God, we should be completely sold out. Any man come to God must first deny himself. We must be completely sold out. And our focus must be on God. Our focus must be on pleasing him. And anytime we find ourselves, bless the name of God, trying to, 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 to please ourselves, we cannot please the Lord. Walk in the spirit that you might not fulfill the loss of the flesh. As many that are led by the spirit are the sons of God. If you practice to walk in the spirit, do the things that would have you to make sure you're reading, make sure you're fasting, make sure you're praying, make sure you devote yourself to God. Make sure that you are completely sold out. I believe that the Lord will direct your life. I believe that irrespective of what is it that you want to achieve, what is it that you want to do, I believe that God will direct your path. But we have to understand that there is between the flesh and the spirit, they are inversely proportional. Anytime you go again, you go to the flesh, you're not pleasing God. Anytime you go to God, you're not pleased in the flesh. And I would like to encourage us as children of the Most High God that if we want to fulfill the plan of God in our lives without facing the repercussions, it's important that we walk in the Spirit. Abraham, like I said, took it upon himself. His wife blamed him and said, my wrong be upon you. She was expecting him to say, look here, I, I expected you now to, 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 to do some directing in this. I expected you to say, let me go back to God. She said, my wrong be upon you. And they had an argument between them. It worked out that Abraham was feeling down when she said, look here, send where the son. And it was God that comforted him and said, look here. He could now send them, send them away with bread and water because the word of God came to him. And he answered, look here, I'm going to make a nation of him also. So like I said that we were going to talk about faith and the will of the Lord. We mentioned a couple of weeks ago that David sought the Lord, especially when it came to facing his enemy. One of the scriptures we mentioned was 1 Samuel 23, 1 to 3. The Philistine, the Bible says, fought against Keilah and they robbed the threshing floors. The Philistine had besieged the city, which was a fortified city within Judah. So this was a fortified city. It was not a city that you could just enter like that. It had fence built around it. And the Philistine fought against it, went in there, and was taking things from the threshing floor. The Bible says, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up and smite these Philistines 
And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistine and save Keilah. David was not yet king, but in his heart, he knew that he was a protector for the children of Israel. And David went to his 600 men that were with him and said, let us go to Keilah to fight on behalf of the people. And the men said, if we are afraid here, where we are, how much more if we go down to Keilah? Because if we go down to Keilah, Saul might come upon us. But David received the word of the Lord. And David went back to the Lord the second time. And this is 1 Samuel 23, 4 and 5. David went back to the Lord a second time. And the Lord... Then David inquired of the Lord yet again. And the Lord answered him and said, Arise, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistine in thine hand. I want us to know that the Lord did not ignore David's second inquiry. He not only responded to David's request, but gave an answer, a more reassuring answer, a more explicit answer, than the first. There were other scriptures that we look at. So David went down to Keilah and he delivered the children of Israel that were dwelling in that city at that time. We also look at other scriptures because after David delivered the men and the women of Keilah, David dwelled there for a time. But it was told David that, look here, Saul is coming. And David again inquired of the Lord, should I stay or should I go? If I stay, will the men of Keilah give me over to Saul? And the Lord said unto him, go, because if you stay, they're going to hand you over to Saul. So in David's life, we recognize that David was a man that sought the will of God. He sought to know the plan of God for his life, especially as it pertains to facing his enemies, right? We mention a couple of other scriptures that talks about David seeking the Lord. When we look in the book of Judges, and let us find that, Judges chapter 6, 36 to 40. Gideon also wanted to know the will of God as it pertains to a matter. And he flees the Lord. And this is found in Judges 6, 36 to 40. By fleeing we mean asking for something tangible, so to speak. Or a sign that when it happens, we know that there can be no doubt that is God talking to us. And the Bible says, And Gideon said unto God, if thou wilt serve, save Israel by mine hand, as thou hast said, behold, I will put a fleece of wool in the floor. And if the dew be on the fleece only, and it be dry upon all the earth beside, then shall I know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. And it was so, for he rose up early the morrow, and thus the fleece together, and wringed the dew out of the fleece by a bowl of water. And Gideon said unto God, let not thine anger be hot against me, and I will speak but this once. Let me prove I pray thee. So God just answer him. You know? And he said, I will speak but this once. Let me prove I pray thee. But this once with the fleece. Let it now be dry only upon the fleece. 
and upon all the ground. Let there be dew. I, and God did so that night, for it was dry up on the fleece only, and there was dew on all the ground. I want us to know, brothers and sisters, that it was God that directed Gideon to gather the Israelites, and Gideon gathered the Israelites, you know. But then Gideon wanted to be sure that this was God voice that he's hearing he wanted to make sure that it was god that instructed him and he wanted to make sure that he understood exactly what god was saying so he asked god for a sign to prove that this was truly his will this was if this is truly your plan give me a sign so gideon got the answer by the fleece so we term the prayer as a fleece prayer, but really we're asking God for something tangible or we're asking God to make something happen for us to know that this is your will. So Gideon said, look here, the fleece and the fleece is the wool that is sheared from the sheep. So the wool he placed and him said, let the new fall on the wool only. And in the morning, Gideon gathered the wool together and he wring it out, one basin full. And then, that wasn't enough for him. There was something in him that said, look here, Lord, I really want to make sure it says you. And he said, look here now, this time let the, the wool be dry and let the ground around it be wet. And God did as Gideon asked. So he got the answer not on one occasion, but he got the answer on the second occasion. Like I was shared with us the other day, sometimes as individuals, and we're talking about faith now and finding the will of God. But I must point out this sometimes as individuals, we want to know the will of God as it pertains to something. Because sometimes we're praying and we don't we don't get the answer. We don't get the answer right away. Sometimes we get the answer. We're not really sure. And we want to make sure. So we pray. And sometimes we say, Lord, if it is your will, make this thing happen. And so this was what Gideon did. I made the point a couple of weeks ago that when I was going to get married, you know, I met Sister Bailey and, and, and I realized that I like her. So I'm getting real practical now, you know. And I began to pray. And I tell her, look, you know, me like you. So, so let us pray and, and see if, you know, this is God's will. If, if God would have us to be together. And I asked God said, God, let these things happen. Let these five things happen. And if they happen, I know that it is your will. And who do you believe that these five things came to pass? And I understand that a lot of persons, when they, they get in marriage, if they know fleece God about anything, they, they, they normally fleece God about, is this the person that you would have me to marry? Because getting married is a big decision. It is one of the most important decisions that an individual could make for better or for worse in sickness or in health to let us do part. So I, I wanted to make sure, so I prayed the prayer. And the Lord bring these things to pass. All that I ask for. However, from that time until now, I have not prayed a prayer again to say, Lord, if it's your will, let this thing happen. I guess that I am a more mature Christian now. I guess I, I, am, I am walking in the spirit now. And, 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 and I start to understand God a, a little better now. And when he talks to me, I, I, I know. So, but, but Gideon, he wanted to make sure and he fleeced the Lord. And sometimes when we want to make sure we fleece the Lord, we... You just don't want to get up and do the thing like that. You want to make sure. And I am going to encourage us that 
if we're doing the thing, try and find the perfect plan of the Lord. I am not telling you to fleece God because fleece sometimes, if you study the story of Gideon, you will recognize that there was lack of faith. And that is why he asked the second time and said, God, make this time the, 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 the wool wet, the wool dry, and around it being wet. But it's another way of proving God and saying, God, if this is your will. But I want us to recognize that as it pertains to finding the will of God, that faith is extremely important. There are times when we will pray, wanting to find the mind of God, wanting to know the will of God, but there is no answer. What do you do when you prayed, fasted, and you are now waiting on the Lord to give you a confirmation? Is it that you sit down and decide that, look here, I am not going to do anything at all until God said, look here, this is my will move. How does faith work in all of this? Brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that we can identify the will of God from his words. And I'm saying this before I make two points. So, the will of God is that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The Bible also says, be ye not yoked together with unbelievers. So there are some principles that the Bible gives us. So if as a Christian lady, an unsaved man approach you, it don't even make sense. You go to God and ask God, say, God, what is your will? Because the Bible don't tell us, say, look here. What fellowship of darkness with light? So any of you find yourself praying and say, God, I like this person, but him and save. The Bible don't tell you. But you're going before God because in your mind you have now made up that look here. I am willing to overlook what the Bible says. I am willing to overlook that he's unsafe so that I can get a spouse. And I'm just being honest with us. So from the scriptures, we can identify some things. So some things, you know, you don't have to go to God and say, God, what is your will to this? The, one of the things that we must do is to look what the Bible says. So for example, the first thing that we can do now is to wait on the Lord. And I said it a couple of weeks ago, but let me reemphasize. The perfect will of God is going to take patience and it's going to take time for it to manifest and to come to fruition. If we are going to abide in and do the will of God, this perfect will, then patience is going to be a virtue. The Bible says in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The New King James Version says, be anxious for nothing. In other words, don't be too eager. For something to happen. When we pray. We must wait on the Lord. And this is why I made the point earlier on. That you can't walk after the flesh. Abraham and Sarah. They wanted a child. And they wanted this child so much. That they couldn't bother to, to do the waiting on the Lord. And they went by their own way, after the flesh, after the will of the flesh, to produce this child. 
And even when this child came, God himself was saying, look here, this is not the one. I will not establish my covenant with him. Because this child was after the flesh. So do not be too eager for the things that we desire. Look here now. When the desire comes, it is God that now puts the desire, the good desires in our spirit. The desires that are aligned with the word of God, God put those desires in our spirit. So desiring a husband or, or a wife is not a bad thing. Desiring a house or a car is not a bad thing. The problem now is when, as a man, I begin to desire this thing more than all. I desire the will of God to be done as it pertains to this thing. And then this desire now becomes so great. That after my own self, after my own will, I begin to do now everything to get this desire, to get this thing come to pass. As individuals, the Bible said don't be anxious, don't be too eager for it, don't get caught up with it so much. Till this thing takes the place of God. If you allow it to take the place of God, you're going to make the decision now as a man, after the will of man. And God is not into that. If you make the decision after the will of man, you're not pleasing God. So, therefore then, as individuals, we must not get too caught up. We desire it. But we must not get too caught up with the thing. And as I speak to us right now, I wish I could share the testimony. But make God do what I do first. But look here. I want us to understand that as Christians, the first thing we must do is to wait on the Lord. Wait on Him. When we pray, we must wait on the Lord. Though we mention that God will answer when we ask to know his will, we are going to find out that there are times when we ask and the answer will not come right away. And there are times when we ask and the answer will come, but not in its entirety. There are times when we ask and we are going to have to wait for a period of time before God's plan comes to fruition. Abraham knew the will of the Lord. He knew the will of God for his life. Going to make you the father of, of nations and indeed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But there was no child. Abraham said, what will you give me seeing that I go childless? He was yearning. But 25 years passed. And then God said, look here, this is the time. 25 years it took before the plan of God came to fruition. Abraham stepped it and Ishmael came. But God's perfect plan 25 years. I don't know what you have been praying about. It might be a long time coming. Years have passed. But I want to encourage us tonight to wait on the Lord. God will not have you to wait indefinitely. God is not slack concerning his plans for your life. And let us look now at Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall, and they shall walk and not faint. But they that wait upon the Lord 
you might have been praying for some time now, but I want to encourage you to continue to wait upon the Lord. We're talking about faith and the will of God, you know. But you must learn how to wait. So you might feel down. You might wonder how long. You might think about what is it that you are going to do in order for this, come, this thing to come true. What else can I do? But you are going to find out that when you come to the end of yourself, when it comes to the end of all your plan and all your thinking and everything, you are going to find out that that is the time God's strength becomes perfect in your life. You say, God, I can't do nothing else. I just want to make sure that I do your will. And you're going to find that God will just work it out. So you prayed, but there is no answer. Wait on the Lord. The waiting is important if we are going to abide in his will. Waiting is important if we are going to see God's perfect will done in our life so the second thing that we are going to do now is move by faith so after we pray the desire come we pray about it we wait on god to see what god is doing but we're still moving you know so we move by faith the second thing that we are going to do is to move by faith the bible says faith comes by hearing and that by the word of God. There is no doubt that when Abraham heard the word of God, he believed. The Bible tells us, Genesis 15, 4 to 6. And Abraham had a conversation with the Lord. And he said, what will you give me seeing that I go childless? And behold, the word of the Lord came. Unto him saying, this one shall not be thine heir, but the one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, look up towards the heaven and count the stars if thou art able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall your descendants be. And the Bible said, verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted to him for righteousness. I want us to understand that if we are going to abide and to do the plan of God for our lives, we have got to move by faith. We have got to believe God. When God first called Abraham in Genesis chapter, chapter 12, God said, Come and I will take thee to a place that I will show thee. Abraham left where he was. Left all of what he knew from young until that age. Zero to 75. Abraham left all of that and was willing to follow God by faith. The word of God came to him. I am saying to us that God in revealing his plan, revealing his will to us as individuals, God will whisper something. I am going to make of you a minister, I am going to do this in your life. I am going to do that in your life. It's important that we follow the will of God by faith. So Abraham believed the word of God and it was quoted unto him for righteousness. The Bible in Hebrews 11.6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God. Must first believe. That he is. And that he is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek him. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For any man come to God. Must first believe that God is. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, it come back to the seeking, like I was talking to us about the fir in, during the first week, that we must seek the Lord if we are going to find his will. God said this, you know. 
The Bible says this. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And you come to God, you must seek. And he will be a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We must understand that while praying and waiting, we must exercise our faith. How do we exercise our faith? Is it by sitting down, doing nothing? Sitting down and say, I believe that God is going to do this thing. But let us turn in our Bibles to the book of James. Chapter 2, verses 14 to 24. What doeth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? I know that we preach all the time and say, look here, it's not of works lest any man should boast. But if a person don't believe, if him don't act, take on the name of Jesus Christ in baptism, lift him faith to receive the Holy Ghost, him can't be saved. So even though we say, we don't do anything, we must come to God by faith and we must have some action of willing to, to say, God, forgive me. We must have some action of willing to surrender ourselves. So he said, what do it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed, and fill, notwithstanding he give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doeth it profit? Even so faith, if it at not works, is dead, being alone. Yeah. A man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. He see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. So what I'm trying for us to understand from this passage, what James is saying to us is that yes, we pray, we, 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 we're waiting on God, we believe in God. But what James is saying that while you're waiting, while you believe in God, you must show me your works. Because if you don't show me your works, it means that you don't have any faith. Does this mean then that we are going to get up and do what we please? No. It means then that we are going to follow what the scripture says. It means then we are going to use the wisdom that God give us. It means then we are going to talk to the elders and see what the elders have to say about it. 
finding the will of God, you know. And abiding in it. It means that while in our waiting, we are going to do the actions diligently, prayerfully, so that the perfect will of God can be done. Let us take, for example, a house. You are praying about a house, but it is going to take works for you to identify one. So you pray, you pray, the desire come, and you are praying about a house. And you say, God, you know I want a house. I believe that it's God that put the desire there. But while you believe in God for a house, the works don't tell you that you have to go and search. And find a house. So now that you identify the house. Your prayer now becomes Lord is this the house. That you have for me. Or is it something else. In waiting. You don't. So you find it. You are praying. And you are waiting. So you are praying and you are waiting. You are praying and you are waiting. But you don't know sitting waiting. And do nothing. And then allow someone else to come purchase the house. And then you say, oh God. I thought it was mine. But you sit and do nothing. So you pray. And with the wisdom from the scriptures. And the leading from the Holy Ghost. Move by faith. So what you do? Find out the cause for the house. Faith and works, no, we know. Find out what is it that you need to have in order to get the house. You believe God for the house. You're praying for the house. You're fasting, know that you identify it. But you have to put in the works while you believe God. So you're going to find out what is the deposit amount. And say, yes, God, may have this thing in the bank now. And then you're going to find out what is the mortgage payment. Without lying on the farm. You know that some folks lie on the farm. And when the payback is supposed to pay back, they can't afford to do the payback. Because they want the house. But the Bible said the devil is the father of life. So if you lie on the farm... You're gone outside of God's perfect will for your life. You, you see how it works? So you have to be truthful on the farm. Truthful to the mortgage officers at the NHT and at the bank. And then you see if you, if you can manage your payback. You say, God, you know, say, everything for, for this thing. Is within my scope. What is it that you say? You put in everything. I believe. That if above everything else. Your desire is to abide in the plan of God. God will direct you. So even though you are praying and you don't hear anything. Now you are moving by faith. But you are moving by faith. And you want to make sure that you are in the will of God. You do everything within your power. If it's what God has for you, it is for you. If it's not God's will for you to get that house, even though it's within your range, even though you have the deposit, God have a better house in a better location for you. He will open the doors and close the doors to have you remain in his perfect will. When I prayed, I told us, I think last week or the week before that I prayed. Years ago when I prayed about 
migrating. So everybody around me was migrating. And I said, Lord, I wonder if this is the way. And I prayed about migrating. I also prayed about school. And guess what I did? I put in the application to the recruiter. I do everything that the recruiter wanted me to do. I even called the recruiter. But I also did everything as it pertains to going to school. And I was praying. Didn't hear an answer. But I moved by faith. And in the midst of everything, remember you know, my, my though I I was though I applied and though I applied to the school, my ultimate desire was God. Anything I do, I want to make sure that I am in your perfect will for my life. And would you believe it that God sends somebody that don't know nothing? Just say, look here. The Lord say you must go back to school. So this is what I mean when I say move by faith, you know. You, you, you believe God. And you pray and you do what you supposed to do. But your ultimate goal is not to get overly anxious to so say this is the, I believe that this is the, God, the will of God man this and you put everything there and build up your hope so much till when God is saying no in your mind it is yes when God is saying no you believe that God is saying yes because you, you get overly anxious about this thing but while you pray while you wait you ask God, God, I want to be in your perfect, your number one desire. God, I want to be in your perfect plan for my life. And I tell you that God will answer. I was sensitive enough, wise enough to walk through the doors that God opened. Though he sent somebody to tell me to go back to school. I didn't know that I was going to get through because I wasn't even qualified to do the course. After the process, I go to school then, yes, I start putting plans in place to get the car from the school. I start putting on the school fee. Could you believe that even a scholarship I got? Because I made sure that my ultimate goal and ultimate desire was to do the will of the Lord. The Bible in Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Psalms 37, 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Trust. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him. And he will do it. He will bring it to pass. If our desire is to please the Lord above everything else. God will open the doors and shut some doors for you to abide in his will. If you are praying about a husband, I want to encourage you. That is not your responsibility to go in search of a husband. The Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. So allow the man to do the searching. Men, anytime you find the, 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 the scriptures, you know, can't wrong. Anytime you find a lady in search, avoid the lady there. Me just talk in Bible. And as the Holy Ghost lead me now. So if you're praying for a husband, and like I said earlier on, and an unsafe approach, you, you know the scriptures. You want to abide in the will of God. I know that as a sister you have in your mind probably tall, dark and handsome. Or probably brown, tall and handsome. I, I, I don't know. 
But God give you wisdom. You need to look at if the man paying him tithes. You need to look at if he mean. You need to look at if he love God. If he involved in ministry. So it can't be now. We're talking about the will of God. You know? Before you even go to God in a prayer. You have to know certain things. How often him come to church? So, so you have to look at these things. Him have ambition. Him ambitious. Him willing for work. You, you have to ask these things. Because if the signs are before us. You, you know that I have a burden for marriage already. So if the signs are before us and we get married. Guess what happened? It's problems. And I say marriage because I know that it is one of the most, other than salvation, they talk about marriage, they talk about having children and career, all of them things are important. But it is also extremely important that whatever we, we do in life, whatever we try to, to, to gain and to go after, that we find ourselves within the perfect plan of God. The Bible in Psalm, it says, commit your ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. If you trust God, if you believe God, God is going to bring it to pass. He's going to work the thing out, close the door that should be closed, open the doors that should be open. And as individuals, we must be wise enough to identify when God closes a door. And don't try to open that door and walk through the one that he opens. The Israelites, like I said, walk in the wilderness for 40 years and only two came into the promised land because of their unbelief. And finally, the Bible in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, gives us the blueprint. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not a part, but with all your heart. And lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And he shall direct thy path. So, like I've been saying to us, the blueprint to find, to abide, is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct. He will open the doors, like I've been saying. And he will close the door. But above everything, our desire should be, Lord, I want to make sure that I'm in your will and in your plan for my life. My prayer is, brethren, as we go forward in life, as we go forward in our Christian walk, that we do our endeavor best to make sure that we are in the plan of God for our life. Anytime you take it upon yourselves, and begin to make your own decision. Begin to desire things above God. You are going to find yourself in a position. Where you have to deal with the repercussions. And I am saying to us. When you make the decision to follow Christ. And you know that you are in his will. When the rough times come, you, you have this confidence, you have this assurance to say, Yes, Lord, I am in your will. Comes what may. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do your utmost best to make sure that you abide in the will of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of it. Um, and the Lord richly bless you. There was a question, I think a question came in, um, one person was asking, um, 
where in the scripture did Abraham married? The, the Bible did not say that it, uh, talk about a wedding, but the Bible did say in Genesis chapter 16, I think about verse 3, that Sarah gave Agar to Abraham for his wife. And the Bible did use the word wife there. So you can, you can look at it. Amen. But God bless you. And it was good. God bless you one more time. May the Lord richly bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Before I close in prayer, let me just read some announcements. Um, remember our five days and night of fasting starts this Saturday morning, 12 a.m. So, and we go five days and five nights. So we start Saturday and we end on Wednesday. We will be having nightly prayer meetings from 6.30 to about 8. 6.30 p.m. to about 8 p.m. So the, we will not have any prayer meeting Saturday evening. But Sunday evening, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., we will have prayer meeting. Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday morning, which is Ash Wednesday, we will be having a full day of prayer within the sanctuary. And group one and group two will share the sanctuary from 8 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. We'll break. The sanitizing crew will do their work. And then from 12 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., group three and four will be in the sanctuary. Bridget and I want to encourage us to prepare our minds, prepare our spirits, prepare our hearts to receive a blessing from God, to, to seek the face of God as it pertains to some things within our life, as it pertains to some things corporately, and let us see the blessings of God upon us as a church and upon us as individuals. Now, let me just also say that the prayer meeting Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, will be on Zoom. You can tune into your to the WhatsApp. We, you know, we will send you the Zoom ID and, and password and all of that to, to be a part of the prayer meeting. And then on Wednesday, you know, we'll be in the sanctuary, like I said. For those who have medical conditions, we want everybody to do the fast. But if you have a medical condition, look here, do as best as you can do. If you can do from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., would appreciate it. We want everybody to be a part of this fasting. Like I said, by now we should be getting our minds in tune. By now we should be putting our prayer list together of the things that we are going to pray about, of the things that we are going to fast about. By now we should start eating down. You know that when you are going to do the fast, you need to eat down. So if you eat three or four meals a day, what you do now, from today you start eat three, tomorrow you eat two, Friday one, and then Saturday 12 a.m. you know the fasting start. So we just want to make sure that everybody is careful and everybody get as much as possible out of the fast. Bible says, some kind go it not except by prayer and fasting. I believe that there is a blessing in store for each and every one of us. And I want each and every one of us to be a part of the fasting. God bless us tonight in the name of the Lord. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come to you right now and we give you thanks, God, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for this word, great Jesus, that has gone forth lord jesus and we thank you for the hearts that you have blessed for the hearts that you have directed 
for the hearts that you are even got trouble in right now. We pray that as your people that our desire, our ultimate goal, Lord Jesus Christ, is to fulfill the plan that you have for our life. For I know the plan that I have for your life. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you an expected end. We pray, God, that as individuals, we will embrace this plan. Lord, if you created this world in such splendor and beauty, the universe, God, and you have a plan for our lives, we pray, God, that as individuals, people called by your name, that we will embrace this plan. We pray, God, that we will walk in the Spirit. Oh, Jesus, that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit that we might remain in your plan for our lives. Lord, we commit ourselves to you one more time and we give you thanks. Thanks for hearing tonight. Thanks for answering. God, if there's any unsaved that is tuning in, we ask God that you touch them. We ask God that you grant repentance and that you give them a mind to serve you. Let your perfect will be done. We ask these mercies and more in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen.